Since its formation in 1963, British-based car company McLaren has been pioneering and innovating the competitive world of Formula One, forging a formidable reputation, which has seen the racing team win 20 world championships and over 180 races. In addition to its successful racing team, the McLaren Group has diversified to include the production of high-performance sports cars under the name McLaren Automotive and a game-changing technology and innovation business known as McLaren Applied. The company's goal remains consistent across the board, declaring that we exist to win in everything we do. However, while McLaren's growth and ambition are certainly impressive, its practices have not been very profitable as of late. In the third quarter of 2022, McLaren Group recorded a net debt of 521 million British pounds, which is equal to around 627 million U.S. dollars. It also announced plans to lay off up to 25% of its workforce. So, what's going on at McLaren? And will the much-loved car company exist at all in the near future? Here's everything you need to know. The early history of McLaren can be traced back to 1963, when Bruce McLaren, a New Zealand racing driver, founded Bruce McLaren Motor Racing Limited. The company, initially focused on motorsport, and its first Formula One race was in 1966. It didn't take long to find success, as McLaren achieved victory throughout the 1960s and 70s, winning multiple Formula One championships and other prestigious races such as the Indianapolis 500. Following a tragic testing accident that claimed the life of Bruce McLaren in 1970, the reins of the team were taken over by Teddy Mayer. Under his leadership, the team went on to win their first Formula One Constructors' Championship in 1974, with Emerson Fittipaldi and James Hunt securing the Drivers' Championship in 1974 and 1976, respectively. The period also saw the commencement of a long-standing sponsorship deal with the Marlboro cigarette brand beginning in 1974. In the late 70s, McLaren expanded into the automotive industry with the launch of the McLaren M81 Mustang, which was a modified version of the Ford Mustang. However, the company's real breakthrough came in 1992 when it launched the McLaren F1, a high-performance sports car that set a new standard for speed and engineering excellence. The F1 was also the first road car to use carbon fiber composites, which provided a significant weight advantage and improved performance. Despite this, only 106 units of the McLaren F1 were made, and once production was completed, McLaren cars went into a hibernation of sorts. Strangely, it wasn't until the launch of the McLaren Automotive in 2010, just before the release of the MP4 12C in 2011, that McLaren made its return to the production car market. Still, the success of the F1 established McLaren as a major player in the industry, and the company continued to produce high-performance cars such as the MP4 12C, later shortened to the 12C. McLaren became known for its combination of technological innovation, design excellence, and commitment to high-performance engineering. In 2011, McLaren GT was established, a division of McLaren Automotive. It focused on developing, building, and supporting all of McLaren's track and GT racing endeavors. Their efforts resulted in specialist race cars, such as the 720S GT3 and the 570S GT4, as well as the new Artura GT4 and Artura Trophy. As in Formula One, McLaren has tasted plenty of success on the grand touring scene. In their debut season, 13 McLaren GT customer teams competed in 14 races and won a total of 19 races in various championships. 2011 was also the year in which McLaren launched its bespoke special operations. Well, it was officially established in 2011, but its roots extend over 20 years to the early 1990s, when it evolved from the McLaren Customer Care Program. This program was created to provide maintenance, servicing, and personalization services for McLaren F1 owners. Four years later in 2015, McLaren introduced its current product structure, which comprises three tiers, Sports, Super, and Ultimate. The models in the Sports and Super Series are named according to their power output, followed by a model designation indicating its type. C for Club, S for Sport, GT for Grand Tourer, and LT for Long Tail. Cars in the entry-level Sports Series include the 570S, the 570S Spider, the 570GT, 540C, 600LT, and 600LT Spider. The Super Series, which is considered the core range of McLaren's models, initially consisted of the 650S, the 625C, and the 675LT, but was later replaced by the 720S in 2017 
followed by the E720S Spider in 2018. Meanwhile, the high-end Ultimate series previously featured the P1 and P1 GTR, and now includes the Senna and Senna GTR and the Speedtail, which serves as the successor to the original F1. Incidentally, the F1 has since been added to the Ultimate series retrospectively, while the 12C joined the Super Series. Those are the products that McLaren is known for, but how does it conduct its business? McLaren Automotive Headquarters is located at the McLaren Technology Center, which is also home to the rest of the McLaren Group. Adjacent to it, the McLaren Production Center, with the two facilities being connected by an underground walkway. A large majority of the McLaren's 4,000 employees work at this complex, which is based in Walking, Surrey, making McLaren one of the largest employers in the region. In fact, McLaren has had a significant economic impact on the United Kingdom in general creating several more jobs further down the supply chain, as many of its suppliers are also located in the UK. In addition to job creation, McLaren's success has also contributed to Britain's export industry. The company exports over 90% of its production to countries around the world, generating significant revenue for the UK economy. McLaren's success has attracted lots of investment too, with many other high-tech companies choosing to locate in the area due to its reputation as a center of excellence for automotive engineering. For these reasons, the UK government is heavily invested in McLaren's success. In 2017, McLaren announced the construction of the 50 million pound McLaren Composites Technology Center, MCTC, at the Advanced Manufacturing Park in Rotherham. The following year in 2018, it was officially opened by the Duke and Duchess of Cambridge, as well as the Crown Prince of Bahrain. The purpose of the facility is to produce carbon fiber chassis for future McLaren road cars, providing the company with greater control over the manufacturing process and the ability to accelerate designs and development. However, even with this support and high-tech facilities, McLaren's success has not been without challenges. In 2017, the company announced a restructuring program that would involve the loss of over 1,000 jobs. The restructuring was deemed necessary due to falling demand for its cars and increased competition from other high-performance car manufacturers. Then, McLaren was hit especially hard by the worldwide events of 2020, seeing a further massive drop in sales. Whereas it managed to sell 4,662 units worldwide in 2019, in 2020, those numbers fell to 1,659 units. Those numbers recovered a little in 2021, up to 2,138, but the car manufacturer is still hurting economically. It's not only sales that were affected, as the 2020 Formula One season was also delayed. This caused McLaren to lose millions of dollars in advertising revenue, as seven races were canceled. Combined with weak demand for its supercars and rising costs, the company lacked a reliable income source and is beginning to feel the heat. Regardless, McLaren has continued to innovate and invest in new technologies, with hopes of boosting its profit in the near future. In 2019, the company announced plans to develop electric and hybrid supercars, which will help to position the company at the forefront of the shift toward more sustainable transportation. McLaren has also continued to invest in motorsport, with its Formula One team achieving significant success in recent years. In February 2021, McLaren submitted correspondence to the UK Parliament regarding the feasibility opportunities and challenges presented by the acceleration of the ban of the sales of new petrol and diesel vehicles in 2030. The document stated that McLaren faces three key challenges, technology availability, supply chain capability, and customer requirements. Clearly, as the UK looks to enforce its zero emissions policy, car companies face even tougher challenges ahead. McLaren was forced to admit that while it may not have a fully zero emission product until the later half of this decade, our road cars will be fully hybrid by 2026. Sustainability is a key focus of McLaren, and moving forward in 2022, McLaren Racing Team released a report highlighting its efforts to reduce its environmental impact. The report outlines five key takeaways, including the team's efforts to reduce its carbon footprint, increase the use of sustainable materials, implement more sustainable business practices, work with partners to drive sustainability, and engage with fans to promote sustainable behavior. The report also outlines the team's progress towards its sustainability goals including a 68% reduction in carbon emissions since 2011, and a commitment to using 100% sustainable materials in its cars by 2030. Admirable as this is, it will result in more revenue and profits for McLaren to be seen. Through the third quarter of 2022, the group reported a revenue of 418 million sales of 1,395 vehicles, liquidity of 87 million pounds, and a group net debt of 521 million pounds. 
Here's hoping these numbers improve significantly, or else we could be in danger of losing one of the most innovative and exciting car companies in existence. McLaren has a storied history and lots of success in terms of racing, production cars, and technology. It would be a real shame if the company weren't able to remain afloat. It has been hit hard in recent years by outside factors, and although it being propped up by investment from both within the UK and abroad, its current performance cannot be sustained forever. The good news is, McLaren has already announced plans to restructure, to move with the times, and continue to win in everything it does. Their commitment to innovation and high-performance engineering has helped to establish McLaren as a world-class brand, and its continued investment in new technologies will ensure that it remains a major player in the automotive industry for years to come.